Our first reading this morning is from Esther chapter 4, verse 12 to 17. Hear the word of the Lord. And they told Mordecai what Esther had said. Then Mordecai told them to return answer to Esther. Think not that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silence at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another quarter. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews to be found in Susa, and hold a fast on my behalf, and neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. Our second reading is from the book of Acts in the New Testament, chapter 16, and we read from verse 22 to 34. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into the prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's fetters were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And he called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out and said, Men, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him, and to all that were in his house. And he took them at the same hour of the night, and washed their wounds, and he was baptized at the once with all his family. Then he brought them up into his house, and set them food before them, and he rejoiced with all his household that he had believed in God. Here ends our reading. We praise and thank the Lord for his word. Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading has been read, and we read from the book of Esther, and we also read the book of Acts. And today's sermon is given a topic. The topic is doing good and trusting God in the process. Doing good and trusting God in the process. We'll speak more in the book of Acts. The book of, the book of Acts records uh, the birth of the church. And it also records the life of the disciples after the ascension of Jesus. It also records the spread of the gospel outside Jerusalem into the ends of the Roman Empire. Paul the Apostle is uh, used by God as an instrument to spread the gospel. He's carrying the message of hope and salvation to the people. God called him and justified him because he wanted to use him from being a persecutor of Christians to being a vessel of carrying out the gospel. One can imagine how difficult it must have been for him to carry the gospel 
in a context of persecution. Because first of all, he was carrying the message about Jesus. The Jesus who was preaching when he was alive, telling the people about God, and he was never accepted by all of them. And that led him in the cross. He was crucified. Uh, maybe it was their plan to suppress the truth that he was preaching or to silence him. Now, Paul comes to preach about the Christ that was crucified. He's preaching about him, resurrected and ascended to heaven. The problem now is that he's been crucified to silence him, to suppress the truth that he was bringing to the people. Now, one person comes telling the people about the same truth that Jesus preached. This must have been a very difficult situation for him because Jesus was never accepted by many, but now his words remain spoken and his truth remain preached by the apostles. Paul was preaching the gospel in such a context. Now in this paragraph that we read, we encounter Paul and Silas in Philippi when they met a girl, a slave girl who is unnamed, who is possessed by the spirit, not a good spirit, but an evil spirit. She was possessed by the spirit and it was a gain to her masters. They made profit out of her possession. They enjoyed seeing her possessed by the spirit because it was profitable to them. No one has ever tried to help this slave woman. No one has ever tried to defend her from the persecution, to, dis de to defend her from from her masters who made profit of her. But things changed when she met Paul and Silas. She, she did not speak the way that her masters wanted her to speak. But now she recognized Paul and Silas as the servants of God who came to tell people about the good works of God, who came to tell people about the way of salvation. Because the spirit of God that was bestowed upon Paul and Silas was way powerful than the spirit that was on this slave woman. Paul commanded the spirit to come out of the girl and immediately the spirit came out. You know what this means? It means that the profit that her masters were making, they were not gonna make it any longer because the spirit that they used was out of the girl. And then this reminded them of when Jesus came into the temple and chased away this, the people that were in the temple and asked them, this is the house of God, and then you make it what you are making it now. So this name has made them angrier than before. That is why they decided to unite and fabricate false accusation against them. Not knowing that the gospel was spreading again. Paul and Silas were imprisoned. They were beaten and they were chained. In those chains, 
in those wounds of being beaten. They praised God. They prayed when lies were spoken about them. They were not shaken. They stood firm in what they believe in. Despite the beatings and the pain they were feeling at that time, despite the imprisonment, they prayed and sang praises to God in the middle of the night. And this challenges us to pray and to praise God even in difficult circumstances, when we feel alone, when the world turns against us, we should remember that we have a God that cares for us. God will never leave us alone. God will listen to us when we cry upon him. Like God always does when we pray, he came to their rescue. When a sudden earthquake came and shook the foundations of the prison, and set all the prisoners free. No one was hurt and no one escaped. Indeed, as Luke quotes Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news and to liberate the captives. The captives were now liberated Though it was an opportunity for them to escape, especially because the warden was fast asleep, but they did not escape. I keep wondering why the prisoners did not escape. Is it maybe because they were praising God with Paul and Silas silently? Or they also entrusted their lives to God silently? I don't know. But in that period of possible revenge, when the warden wanted to take his own life, Paul stopped him because he was determined to do good. He was determined to do what is right. Even though they were wronged, they decided to do what is right. Again, the good news of the gospel was spreading because the man who was a warden was also converted together with his household. Now God changed the wicked beating of Paul and Silas into a wonderful harvest and there was a great joy before the angels over that one sinner who has repented. The slave girl was also now liberated from the spirit that possessed her. A spirit that made her double the slave that she already was. Paul stood up for her. And she was now free. That is why he was flogged and jailed for doing the right thing for Christ. But their good actions also led to the repentance of others who lived in the dark. Those who were perpetrators of justice, they, were, they repented in that moment. The jailer who ensured that they were tied and chained for something that they did not do, was now converted. So, let us not get weary of doing good. Let us not get tired of doing what is right because doing good leads to fruitful results. It's obvious that we will also be chained. We will also be called names. We will also be crushed just for testifying about Jesus and for doing justice and standing up for all those that the society is enslaving. There will be times when we do goodness for the others and that will not be appreciated but will land us in hot water. But those things should not discourage us from doing what is right. Because even though we are bounded, Jesus has the power 
to shake the foundations of all the evil and set us free. Although it is difficult to do justice in our unjust society like ours, but as Christians, we should strive for doing what is right in order to please God. So I'm encouraging each and every one of us present here today to continue doing what is right in our communities, in our workplaces, and in our families. Because one act of righteousness pleases God. We should stand up for the truth, even at the risk of being chained, just like Esther did. She stood up to the king, knowing exactly what will happen to her if she approaches the king without being called. But she did that to save the Jewish nation. She said, I will go to the king, even if it's against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Because it was the right thing to do to save the Jews from being killed. The king welcomed her with open arms and the Jews were also liberated. Imagine if we can unite towards goodness, the world will be a better place for all of us. There will be peace and harmony in this chaotic world. May God give us the courage to do good, even in the midst of evil, and also to trust him even in our darkest moments of pain and suffering. To God be the glory, honor and praise now and forevermore. Amen.